Hi, I'm Raven Wind. Hello, Raven Wind. <laughs> How are you today? I'm I'm good, thank you. What's your name? Ring. Okay. <laughs> you change it from from podcast to podcast. To be honest, I get confused because I have my witch name, uh-huh. my real life name. Mm-hmm. Then I work on three different psychic networks, and I had to use a different name on each one because the name I wanted was already taken. So some days I really don't know who the hell I am. You're like, I'm just here. <laughs> I'm just here. I'm here. Uh, today we're going to talk about the persecution. Persecu- oh, Jesus fucking Christ. We're not even in the podcast yet. And it's starting. And it's starting. And I'm just going to like, I'm going to start off by saying that this particular podcast has a lot of information from other countries. And we know how I deal with pronouncing things from other countries. Yes. So I'm just going to say straight off. That there's going to be a lot of mistakes. Yep. There's going to be a lot of me just making it up. Yeah. And then a lot of you laughing at me. <laughs> so today we're going to do the persecution of witches, uh, 21st century. Uh, this was actually an article in the New York Times. It was by Mitz, Mitz, Mitz God, Jesus. <sighs> Mitch Horowitz. H O R O W I T Z Horowitz. Okay. I didn't hear you guys start the podcast. I'm still in here. Yeah. Sorry. July 4th, 2014 was when he wrote this podcast or this article, rather. Yes, yes. Uh, most poli- most people believe that the persecution of witches uh, reached its height in the early 1690s with the trials in Salem, Massachusetts. Um, but it's it's a grim paradox of 21st century life that violence against people accused of sorcery is very much still, uh, you know, happening. Um, it's far from f- fading away and um, kind of because that we're so connected now, like through like social media and stuff like that. The interweb. The interweb. Um, Why you do know, I like saying that so much? We're we're kind of seeing that this is still happening in other areas um, around the world. Uh, in recent years, there's been a uh, an uptake in attacks against people accused of witchcraft in Africa, the Pacific, and Latin America, and even among immigrant communities in the United States and Western Europe. Um, researchers with United Nations refugee uh, and human rights agencies have estimated uh, the murders of supposed witches as numbering in the thousands each year. Um, now, you don't, you haven't heard a bit of that in the news. No. You know, human rights agencies are like, no, thousands of people are dying every year from being accused of witchcraft. Um, and of course, you know, things like, you know, the beatings and the banishments, that those could run into the millions. Um, it's very quickly... Don't they, uh, think, don't they, um kill ab- albino children in some parts of the world i yeah. don't know what country it is though i'm thinking yeah. africa yeah that's messed up it is yeah it is um the beatings and you know they're talking about the beatings and banishments like it is probably way more than than what the killings are um it's becoming an international problem um it's a form of persecution and violence that is spreading around the globe um there's a guy, his name is uh, Jeff Crisp, and he is an official with the United Nations uh, High, he, High Commissioner for Ref, Refugees. He, oh, the struggle is Jesus real. fucking Christ. He told a panel in 2009, um, you know, the full, like kind of the full dimensions on the problem. He gave a report um, by that agency and UNICEF. Um that kind of talked about the numbers and that there's a lot of violence against children um, as well. So it's not just adults that are being affected by it. It's children as well. And like there was even, uh, you know, people may have seen it. Like there was this whole um, thing on, on uh, like Facebook going around of this child, like a two year old little kid that had been turned out into the streets to fend for itself because it got labeled as a witch. That's messed up. And um, some missionaries found the child and, like, was like, oh, shit, like, let's take care of the kid and saved it. 
but like it, no one was feeding it. It was just left to wander around the streets. And when people would see the little kid, they would like kick it over and stuff. I mean, it was horrible. All because someone had labeled that child a witch at two years old. Um, there are there have been recent media reports uh, suggesting um, that there's mutilation and murder ha- mutilation and murder happening. Um, now this is last year, so this was written in 2014. So 2013, um, a mob in Papua New Guinea uh, bar- burned alive a young mother. Uh, who she was twenty, who was suspected of sorcery. Uh, this highly publicized case followed a series of instances over recent years of lethal group violence against women and men accused of witchcraft. Um, they're becoming all too common in parts of the country, um, said Prime Minister Peter O'Neill. Last year, Papua New Guinea um, finally released a 1971 law that permitted attacks to cite um, intent to combat witchcraft as a legal defense. So until ni- so like in 1971 a law was enacted in Papua New Guinea that said like if you say that you killed someone because you're fighting witchcraft that that was a defense. Wow. Yeah. Um so you know and this is I mean this is the kind of stuff that we are thinking like happen. So so if there's another witch I don't like which there is. Uh Yes. <laughs> can I go attack them? And go to court and say, I was fighting witchcraft. <laughs> well, first of all, it would have to have been in Papua New Guinea. Mm. And it would have had to have been, uh, you know, before 2013. Do you see what's happening? It would have had to, yeah. <laughs> it would have had to have been between the years of 1971 and 2013 that you killed someone for being a witch. The the cat the, the the kitten we can never get the older cat to play with the kitten, and Maybe. we placed a piece of paper in the floor for the kitten, and because Sammy wants to lay on it, Sammy's the big old cat. Yeah, the big old cat. Um, they're kind of forced to play together now. It's kind of funny. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. Um says that although police charged a man and woman in connection with the 2013 killing of that, you know, mother that was uh, burned alive, no one has faced trial, um, a fact that drew protests from Amnesty International in February. So remember, this article was written back in 2014, so, you know, things are kind of, like, that That may have, they may have done something with that by now, I don't know. I doubt it. Um, I think the kitten's about to get her ass beat. She left <laughs> uh, one of the ugliest aspects of these crimes is their buta- their brutality. Victims are often uh, burned alive, as in that mother's case. And in 2012, a 2012 case in Nepal, um, Nepal, Nepal uh, accused women are sometimes, you know, beaten to death. Um, and that actually occurred in the Colombian town of Santa Barbara in 2012. That's pretty archaic. Yeah. Um, the victims may be stoned or beheaded. Oh, God! Yeah, as has been reported in Indonesia and sub-Saharan Africa. So, I mean, like, these are things that are happening, like, today. I mean, obviously, this this article was back in 2014, but that's not that long ago. Yeah. I mean, it's really not that long ago. Um, so, you know, we kind of, when we think about the persecution of witches, we're thinking, like, Salem and stuff, but, like, no, like... It's happening, like, now. Like, today. Yeah. Um, a lot of people try to blame poverty in the developing world. Um, you know, it's kind of being the scapegoat uh, for the chief causes of anti-witch attacks. Wait. I yeah. killed somebody accused of being a witch because I'm impoverished. Well, and I, I think that what the, the thing that they're trying to make the connection there is that, you know, you have these people that are impoverished. So they may not be able to go to the doctor and get medicine. So they go to the witch doctor. And that's, you know, kind of keeping the witchcraft going. You know, because we don't have money to go get Western medication. We're going to use herbs and stuff. So we're going to go to the quote-unquote witch in the village who knows how to heal with herbs and stuff. 
so they're saying that poverty is is keeping witchcraft going and because it's continuing to happen there's killings to make it stop so it's very it's very round logic you know it just goes round and round it's stupid yes wait what was my new what was my word moronic moronic it's moronic moronic um <laughs> Well, Africa and Southwestern Pacific um, have a long history of economic misery. Much of this violence, especially against children, has worsened since 2000. The surge suggests forces other than economic uh, resentment or ancient superstition. In some communities, it is uh, chiefly young men who take on the role of witch hunters, suggesting that they may see it as a way to earn prestige by cleansing undesirables and enforcing social social mores. Social. Social. It's a social world. I like that better than social. 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 Oh, you were going. Oh, you. <laughs> you were supposed to play that uh, message that I accidentally. Oh. Oh. Okay. Okay. I don't know why that made social <laughs> made me remember. So I was laying there this morning. Oh Jesus. I slept in. I was happy. And all of a sudden, I had just woken up, and I had picked up my phone to see if I'd missed anything. And a message pops up on Facebook Messenger from Ravenwind. Mm -hmm. And it was an audio clip. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to play it for you guys. <laughs> then I'll let her explain it. <laughs> okay, here we go. It's oh, Nyota. She's just a dog, seven in a doggy world. She's such a puppy. Hi, baby. Hi, baby. Hi, <laughs> yoga girl. Hi, yoga girl. What are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? What's your puppy? What's your puppy? Oh, you're on my phone. You're on my phone. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I woke up to this morning. She didn't know, but the whole time she was singing and talking to her dog like that, her dog had her foot mm -hmm. on the voice recording button <laughs> on the messenger, and it automatically sent it to me, because our conversation is what was open on her phone. Yeah. She was like, she's been so embarrassed all day. <laughs> she heard me singing to my dog. Like, <laughs> You know what you sound like when you're like, She's such a good girl. <laughs> you know the second Ace Ventura? Yeah. When he's calling the elephant to come over and sit on the yeah, car? Yeah, <laughs> That's who you sound like. <laughs> but I was just cheesing it up with my dog this morning, and she standing. Well, just now when I was making fun of you, my dog heard it and come, came over like, yes, what do you need? Cause I, and I'll tell you the backstory what happened. I was in the bathroom on the toilet, okay? <laughs> So she comes in to get some loving. So I lay the phone down on the floor. You were on the toilet. I was on the toilet taking a number deuce. Okay. Um, I didn't need to know this. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I like, cause like I used to put my phone up on the sink, but the cats have come, like they'll come running in and jump up there and they hit my phone and it goes falling to the floor. Yeah. So I just like, I laid it in the floor and I didn't realize she had stepped on it. Well, she did. And it was recording the entire time. And then on Facebook Messenger, like, as soon as you take, like, take your finger off that record button, it sends what you just recorded. Like, there's no, like, are you sure you want to do this? Yeah. Because I just said no. <laughs> I'm glad you didn't. <laughs> well, anyway, anyway. I don't know why social made, re made me remember oh, I'm um, glad it did. singing to my dog. But anyway. Um, so the, the, we're talking about like the, uh, the self-appointed like witch hunters, uh, you know, being young men in the villages. Um, the self-appointed witch hunters, um, are men, uh, you know, cause like they, they were basically what it's saying is they would become witch hunters. And then when a woman would, uh, decline their advance or, you know, refuse a marriage or something like that, then they would use that power that they gave themselves as being a witch hunter to kill her basically wow yeah um and you know the majority of women are victims so um the majority of victims are women did i say it backwards yeah 
Did I? Yeah. It's okay, though. That's why I'm What here. did I say? The majority of women are victims. Yeah. The majority of victims are women. Are women. <laughs> yeah. That would definitely need to be back. Yeah. It's okay. That's okay. That's why I'm here. Um, <laughs> anyway, so because the majority of the victims are women, um, there's a reverend. His name is Jack. Oh, no, I'm going to get this wrong. Urami? <laughs> Urame? Whatever. Um, he's a he's a reverend in Papua New Guinea. Uh, he works closely with the Papua New Guinea Human Rights Agency. Um, he estimates that witchcraft-related violence there is directed uh, five to one against women. So, out out of there, there's five women to every one man that's accused. You know, if they if they would let Putin and his best bud Steven Skull in, mm-hmm. they'd set up some free judo schools like yeah. they did in Russia. Yeah, and teach those women how to beat some ass. Yep. It's like not today. <laughs> Um, another factor, uh, particularly, particularly in Central Africa, is um, its dysphoria communities. Um, the advent of revivalist churches in which self-styled pastor prophets rile against witchcraft and demon possession. They often claim to specialize in the casting out of evil spirits, sometimes charging for the service. Many of those congregations have emerged from Western evangelizing efforts. I have a side note that has absolutely nothing to do with the podcast. Sure. Yesterday, in 1305, was the day Sir William Wallace was betrayed and captured. Okay. All of our Braveheart fans might enjoy that little tidbit. Freedom! (laughs) (laughs) Anyway... Um, so, you know, I'm not surprised that, like, some of these, you know, crazy missionary types have went over to Africa and have caused all of this mayhem. Um, because Jesus. Because Jesus. Um, one of Nigeria's <laughs> most popular Pentecostal preachers, Helen, oh, Jesus fucking Christ, Helen, why is your last name so weird? Yukpabio? Wait, what? UK... Uh-huh. P-A-B-I-O. Yukpabio. Pabio. <laughs> Is it Uk? Uh, maybe it's Uk. I don't know. Ukpabo? I don't know. But anyway, she she's a Pentecostal preacher, and she wrote, If a child under the age of two screams in the night, cries, and is always feverish with uh, deteriorating health, he or she is a servant of Satan. Or it could have a health problem. Yeah. Now this is in <laughs> this is in Nigeria. Yeah. Okay. So you know, children. If a child under two screams in the night, cries, and is always feverish with deteriorating health, obviously they're a servant of Satan. Couldn't be that it's malaria. Well, then, or minus you the, know, minus the fevers and deteriorating health, they would have thought my daughter was Satan. Yeah. When she was little, because she. All she did was scream all night, every night, for like six years. Yeah. I'm still damaged. I know. <laughs> You're scratching your head right now. You're like, I can't remember this shit. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, you know, but just simply by that implication, children in those communities are especially likely to be identified as being possessed. Random fact. You're full of them today. Her night terrors like that stopped when I put salt under her mattress. Hey. Yeah, we're talking about you, offspring. Oh. <laughs> um, the United Nations Office of the High Commissioner for Human Rights reported that most of the 25,000 to 50,000 children who live on the streets of, uh, oh shit, uh, Kan- Kanasha. It's a town. Yes. The capital of the uh, Democratic Republic of Congo uh, were abandoned by family members who accused them of witchcraft or de- demonic possession. So there's a lot of little um, homeless kids running around the, the Democratic Republic of Congo because their family said they were witches and abandoned them. Uh, huh. So, you know, when you when we think about the, the, ec- the epidemic of, you know, blaming children, blaming women, and, and you know, kind of seeking them out, it's really complex. Um, 
human rights observers point to overpopulation, rapid urbanization, and the hardship of parents forced to relocate to seek work, as well as the sheer stress um, of raising children amid dire poverty. Um, Superstitions are stoked by local healers who charge patients to exercise evil spirits. There's a sad business for us. Exercising evil spirits? Yeah. How would we do that? We just Get finished. out, you demon! Do like you did to the lady at the oh, yeah. festival. Yeah, where I did a an omen of protection. Who knows what the fuck that would even be. I, I don't even know. <laughs> and I turn around and you're like laying hands on her. <laughs> yes! <laughs> Yes, we can. Uh, we can like crack a, a raw egg over their head. Yeah. Um. You. You can be like going around them with like sage. Yeah. Burning. Mm-hmm. And then I'll just like do some mumbo jumbo words. I'll just fucking read apparently because I can't say words. You'd have to do all the talking because yeah. you know me. I'd just be like, stop being a moron. And maybe yeah. you wouldn't think you had an evil spirit yeah. chasing you around. It's like, have you tried not being an idiot? Yeah. <laughs> I have a hard time, guys. Yeah. Bev's able to deal with people better than I am. <sighs> oh. Mm, I'm yawning. Um, don't, don't do that, Butters. Damn it, Butters! <laughs> Damn it, Butters. <laughs> That's their cat. <laughs> Damn it, Butters. Go to your room, Butters. Um, <laughs> Think about what you've done. <laughs> <laughs> so witch hunting um, is far from limited, you know, just to like these, you know, acts of, of um, you know, men using it to get their way and, and people profiteering off of it. Some legal systems even sanction the killing of accused witches. So there's, there's uh, some legal precedent that kind of allows that to happen. Um, in 2011, courts in Saudi Arabia uh, sentenced a man and a woman in separate cases to beheading after, con- uh, after convictions for sorcery. In 2013, Saudi courts um, sentenced two Asian housemaids to 1,000 lashes and in, in 10 years in prison on charges of casting spells against their employers. A Lebanese television psychic, um, Ali Hussan Saibate. Sabib. Sab- whatever. Sab- <laughs> what is that song that you love? And like every Yalla time. Yellow Habibib. Yellow Habibib. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember. What do you and remember? you looked it up. Yeah. It's Get Low. Yeah. DJ Snake. Yeah. And you even Googled it. It turns out I was saying it right. <laughs> yeah. Yellow Habibib. <laughs> Which is something like 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 my baby or something. Yeah, it's like a, a term of endearment. Yeah. Yellow hubby babe. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, that psychic Sorry. was arrested in, <laughs> was arrested in two thousand eight while on pilgrimage to um Medina uh by the Saudi uh religious police. So they have religious police? Wow. Like they have police. Wow. And then religious police uh, for hosting a television show uh, in his native Lebanon, The Hidden. Where oh, he, was a guy? Yeah. <laughs> I thought it was a girl. No, where he would make predictions and prescribe love potions and spells. So he, he was not like he was, he like he had recorded the show in Lebanon mm-hmm. and he was in uh, Saudi, like Saudi Arabia. And they were like, hey, we know that fucker. And they arrested him for something that he did in in, in Lebanon. Wow. Um, after an outcry by Amnesty International and others, the Saudi courts stayed uh, his execution by beheading. Uh, but they did sentence him in 2010 to 15 years in prison. 15, I would rather be beheaded than do 15 years. I think. Wait, I gotta wait till it starts over. To I'm, do 15 years in a Saudi prison, to be honest. I'm sorry, guys. I have to show her something that's epic. It won't let me share it on Facebook, so I have to just show her. It's a Mortal Kombat giffy thingy doodle. Yeah. What do you think? That's pretty weird. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. 
So tell him what it is, because, I mean, we can't just interrupt the podcast and then we go, that's weird, and go right back to reading. All right, the bad guy who had the spell on him, the bad ninja guy, that wore yellow. I think his name was Scorpion, maybe. Yeah. You know how his hand would open up and it would shoot those mechanical-looking scorpion heads out? Mm-hmm. Well, instead of that coming out of his hand, it's a kitten. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Crawling out of the hole in his palm. See, and this is what she does while we're recording podcasts. She sits there and she plays games. <laughs> and she she scroll, scrolls through Facebook and, like, Instagram. Mm-hmm. And, I mean, like, you're listening and you're participating, but still, like. Hey, I tried to do a couple podcasts and it almost killed you. Well, you read it like a goddamn book report. Like, <laughs> don't read word for word. Like, paraphrase, stop and throw in some of your own information. Like, we've had this discussion before. But the stuff on the paper is my own information that I'm reading. I just confused you, didn't I? A little bit. <laughs> I melted your brain. Uh, as in Africa, <laughs> the wave of anti-witch activity in Saudi Arabia is fairly new. The Saudi, the, the Saudi religious police devised an anti-witchcraft unit. So, oh, so, okay, wait a minute. So now... Uh, we have regular Saudi police. We have Saudi religious police. Yeah. And then within the religious police, they created an anti-witchcraft unit. That's like the... In uh, 2009. That's the preternatural unit, like in the Anita Blake yes. series. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, but that, you know, that resulted in the arrest of 215 alleged conjurers. Okay. In 2000... So they made that unit in 2009... By 2012, they had arrested 215 alleged conjurers. Um, some Boy, of, I'd be in big trouble. I know. <laughs> some observers uh, attribute this sudden interest in witchery to the royal family's attempts to appease its religious in- inquisitors by keeping them busy targeting a handful of uh, vulnerable individuals. Say vulnerable again. Vulnerable. <laughs> Wow. Vulnerable. I'm impressed. Vol. Vulnerable. Like vulva. Vulver. <laughs> <laughs> Do you hear yourself? <laughs> Listen. <laughs> Leave me alone. What was that? <laughs> like, were you like doing the back of your hand like this is what's going to happen if y'all don't leave me alone? <laughs> yeah. Pretty much. Pretty much. I, I, I lifted up my hand like I was going to smack somebody. <laughs> <laughs> a final motive uh, driving modern witch hunting maybe maybe more, um, you know, they're, like they're like, because like, obviously they're saying like, hey, we're doing it because it's spirit. Like there's a spiritual reason, like a religious reason or whatever. But there's something more tangible um, than that. The police in Indonesia where there are about 100 suspected witch killings in 2000, point to fraud and, um, oh, I lost my place. Fraud. You said fraud. Yes, fraud. Uh, point to fraud against vulnerable women who, lacking family or community protection, fall prey to banishment or murder on slim pretexts. Why did I think you were going to say slim shady? Slim shady, I don't know. Uh, while their homes and property are seized by their accusers. So they're saying that, like, in Indonesia, they'll find women that don't, like, they may not have a father or a brother or a husband um, to kind of protect them. So they're like, she's a witch. Um, banish her or kill her, and we'll take her property. So. You know, they could offer to buy it from her. Well, but she's a woman. Why give her money when you could kill her? <laughs> like... That's the, that, I mean, that's, that's the thought. And if you notice, like, okay, yeah, we're talking about your, your cat is going to knock all of your tarot cards off that table. Ugh. Butters. God damn it, Butters. You're always in trouble, Butters. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, we're talking about the persecution of witches. But if you, if you really kind of look below that, it's women. It's the persecution of women. Um, they're just using witchcraft as as the the vehicle to get it done. Um, I've never understood uh, since like the beginning of time the fear of women being powerful. I I don't either. I don't either. Because I mean we are you know I mean with with the 
few exceptions, we are weaker than men. Like just physically, like our bodies are not, you know, made to, to have the same strength and everything that a man has. And you know, I'm okay with that. I mean, there's a lot of women that want to be able to do the same types of jobs that men do and stuff. But I don't. Me personally, I have no desire to do that kind of stuff. So if that makes me the weaker sex, I'm I'm down with that. Mm-hmm. But I don't know. I just don't understand that fear. I don't either. I'm proud to be an American. Oh, let's not get me started on fucking. Okay, we're gonna go off topic. <laughs> you knew I was gonna bring that up. <laughs> oh Jesus Christ! Okay, so a friend on my Facebook page shared this little meme. About, like, how there's, like, millions of Jehovah's Witnesses that don't stand and salute the flag. They didn't you when know, I was in school. Nobody thought anything of it. That there, you know, there's there's uh, hundreds of thousands of Amish people that don't, you know, do that either. Um, but you're going to get upset when a black man kneels during the anthem instead of standing, you know. So, I was like, okay, whatever. Um, I was driving through Cowan. In Webster County. Excuse me. Um, Yesterday, I went to go visit my mother. And uh, I noticed that the firehouse in Cowan had an American flag out. But it wasn't like an American flag because the colors were changed. Like it was a black and white flag with a blue line. And I know what that was for. Like that was for first responders, police officers, whatever. So, I kind of commented on that person's um, little meme thing that they put up. Like, just the, you know, the bigotry behind, you know, how people are so steadfast on let's honor the flag, let's honor blah, 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 but they'll fucking change its colors. Yeah. So, that was all I said. And someone had to, you know, come on there and was like, that's for first responders. I'm like, yeah, I I know that. I realized that. That wasn't what the point was. Like... Talking about, like, the bigotry of it. Mm-hmm. So someone else come in and commented, like, you know, because I said, like, you know, it, it's what I said is it's against the law to change the colors of the flag. Now, I did misspeak. It's not against the law, but it is against the United States flag code. Flag policy, you say. So you're not, I mean, you're not going to be arrested for it. But, like, so then I had to go in there again and be like, okay, yes, maybe I shouldn't have said against the law, but it is against the code. Here's the code to fucking prove it, you know, that, that you don't do that. And I was like, you know, you missed the whole fucking point. Like, the, it's not about that fucking flag. I don't care about the fucking flag. Like, I don't, I don't care. The point is, is like, if you're going to say, you know, damn you for not standing and, and saluting the flag when an anthem is playing, then you need to follow it because it's, you know, policy or whatever. Then you should follow the same goddamn policy and not change the color of the flag. <laughs> you know, like, that's all I said. I do think he should... Stand up for the uh, national anthem. Yeah. And show respect. But I don't get all torn up about it. I don't care. And argue with anybody. Because, I mean, everybody's entitled to have their own opinion. I turned the fan on. What are you looking at? The wall? Where'd your Where'd your mor- mural go? I took that down weeks ago. I haven't been here in weeks. And it was down the last time you were here. Really? Yeah. I didn't notice it. And remember, I was in I was in Big Lots yesterday. Like I'm over here looking for something to hang on my empty spot on the wall, and you're like, "Yeah, llama <laughs> sheets." <laughs> we got llama sheets. Man, we're all over the place with this podcast today. But anyway, that that was our little diversion about the flag. Like I I don't give a fuck People, if you my, if you stand, if you kneel, if you if you burn the flag. I don't give a fuck. My point is like, yeah, I think he, uh, he should stand, but. I don't care that people have different opinions. I'm not going to force mine on everybody else. Yes. People seem to think... Can I get an amen? People seem to think that they have the right to force their beliefs on everyone around them. Yeah. And that's a bunch of crap. With everything, not just religion. Everything. Everything. It could be like people that are like, you know, like coffee drinkers. Like you have the people who are like, you know, coffee is black or with cream. None of this like... Froco, loco, moco, half <laughs> Benny coffee, cream, whatever. Like, it's like, I don't care what you call your coffee. Just shut the fuck up. <laughs> like, I'm like that with everything. Like, I don't fucking care. 
do whatever you want to do. <laughs> anyway. It's like that Generation X meme I posted. Yes. <laughs> I thought that was funny. And then, like, one of the boomer generation... Did not like it very Yeah. Because, like, because uh, you and I are Generation X. Yeah. Because you have boomer... It showed the boomers yelling and freaking out, and it showed the millennials crying and freaking out, which is actually accurate. Yeah. But anyway, and then it showed the Generation X just sitting back, having a mixed drink. Yeah, like... Just looking at everybody like... What like, the fuck? <laughs> and that's, I mean, that's me to a T. Like, I'm just like, you do you, boo-boo. I'm going to do me. We think all the arguing over stupid shit is yeah. just retarded. But anyway, back to the subject at hand. <laughs> which is what again? <laughs> uh, persecution of witches. Oh, 21st century. Sure. Globalization uh, means that paranoia, paranoia over black magic and spirit possession um, are no longer confined to developing nations. Mass migration has made this a persuasive, pro- a pervasive problem. Not persuasive. It's not persuasive. It's pervasive. pervasive. Yeah. Pervasive problem. It's not like the, the problem's like, hey, let me persuade you into agreeing that this is the problem. I'll give you some problem. candy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. You and I would do an awful lot for some queso. Queso sounds nice. I mean, we could probably be talking to doing about yeah. anything for queso. You know, why hasn't like a pizza company thought to put some goddamn queso on a pizza? Don't say that out loud. That's a good idea. Somebody might steal it. <laughs> like. Nick, you could do the mild. Yeah. You could do the spicy. Yeah. Oh, and you could break up like nacho chips and sprinkle yes. on top. Okay, now you're just Give it a little crunch. Queso. Hey, we bitches love queso. <laughs> yeah, um, okay. And I, I mean, I could see like where that might make the pizza soggy. So like what if instead like you have a queso dip for your crust? Like, Ooh, I wonder if they could put it inside the crust. <gasps> like a stuffed queso crust? Yes. Like they could have oh. the mozzarella in the crust, but have it hollow. Yeah. So the melted queso is inside the mozzarella, inside the crust. <laughs> yes. We like cheese. <laughs> we got a problem. <laughs> anyway. Oh, Jesus. <clears throat> we should order pizza after this podcast. <laughs> In January, a Queens, New York man uh, was arrested for beating to death uh, with a hammer his girlfriend. What? Yeah. He beat to death his girlfriend with a hammer. Hit him with a hammer. Um, wow. From Emperor's New Groove. Oh, yeah. Where she's like, hit him with a hammer. Um, her name was Estrella. I was going to say Yzma. <laughs> no. Estrella. I don't know her last name. She was 56. What country? Oh, this was New York. <laughs> like, this was Queens, New York. Because Estrella well, she is was, a Hispanic she, word. But see, that's what we were talking about. Like, before we got to sidetrack, we were talking about, like, how it's not just confined. Because people are, are moving, like, developing. They're moving to develop nations. So yes. they're bringing that bigotry and that superstition with them. Yes. Um, But he beat to death with a hammer his girlfriend. She was 56. And her daughter... He was 25. Um, Carlos Alberto Armorello told police that the women were witches who had been performing voodoo and casting spells on him. Oh. So. So he can't accept that his douchebaggery is his own fault. Yeah. yeah. Somebody's making him do it. Yeah. <clears throat> so. Sure. Um, it's not been confirmed whether or not those queen victims had ties to voodoo or not. Because it shouldn't matter. It do- yeah, I mean, it doesn't matter. <laughs> but um, accusations like those made by, you know, that guy um, who he's under, like, psychiatric evaluation, obviously, um, often prove unreliable or misreported in a sensationalist way. We talked about that on that one podcast. About how the news always, like, how the satanic because, panic that happened. Oh, yeah. Yeah, how the news always, like, sensationalizes, like, you know, that one aspect of the crime. And they can uh, spin a story and change yeah. people's opinions just with their voice inflections. Yeah. On how they report shit. <clears throat> In 2012, <clears throat> Jesus Christ, like, I got a dick suck in my throat. Wait. 
It's like I got a dick stuck in my throat. I don't know what that's like. I've never had a dick stuck in my throat. It's not pleasant. <laughs> You've had one stuck? No, not like like stuck like it won't like come out stuck, but I've had one down my throat. What? You've never been deep throated? I don't want to vomit. I didn't vomit. I mean, I don't know who vomits during like oral sex, but I didn't vomit. Like now, I can suck it. I, I can. <laughs> Her daughter is out of the room. Now, <laughs> by the way, let's just clarify that for a second. I, I can. I have some skills. <laughs> yeah. But for me. I, I should keep it in the forward I part. should uh, enjoy what I'm doing and having my air supply cut off and my eyes start watering yeah. and a gag reflex pop up that's not well okay pleasurable for me we are so all over the place with this podcast <laughs> okay so remember after the brain surgery because like, <laughs> yeah. they fucked up my sinuses like I've had issues with my sinuses ever since the brain surgery remember I told you that I can't give head like I used to yeah because now when my mouth is open, I can't breathe through my nose. If my mouth is closed, I can breathe through my nose just fine. But if my mouth is open, I can't breathe through my nose. That's really weird. I know. And, like, I can a little bit, but, like, not enough. Like, <laughs> I'm over here checking. You know, she's I'm over just... there with her mouth open, breathing through her nose. <laughs> like, if my mouth was open just a little bit. Like, I can, but if my mouth is open wide to accommodate... How big of a dick do you have in your mouth? <laughs> lately, not at all. <laughs> like, lately, nothing at all. But um, I can't <laughs> breathe with my mouth. So, it, it has really affected my ability to be as great at that as I used to be. I have to relearn it. I think you are probably still really great. Mm, thanks. Thanks. You just like having it halfway down your esophagus, but it's not necessary. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. <laughs> anyway. Don't you have a coworker that listens to this podcast now? I, I have several that listen to the podcast. Oh, God. No. I could, I could never visit you at work. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, like, I don't, I don't care. I'm, I, you know, it doesn't bother me a bit. Um, in 2012, The Guardian reported that London police had, during the last decade, investigated 81 cases of ritual abuse of children accused of possession or witchcraft, a phenomenon that the British social agencies fear is on the rise, particularly within African immigrant communities. In 2010, a 15-year-old boy, um, Christy Bamu... <laughs> Sorry. Was tortured and, yeah, you're going to feel bad because old Christy Bamboo, Bamboo or whatever, was tortured and killed in East London uh, by his older sister and her boy boyfriend. Both Congolese, they're from the Congo, Congolese, who had accused him of sorcery after he wet his bed. What? Yep. So he's a, he's a 15-year-old boy. He was tortured <coughs> and killed to death. Killed to death. <laughs> As opposed to what? They tortured. I went to say tortured to death. and Killed I put, to life. <laughs> <laughs> I laughed so hard just now I farted. <laughs> anyway. Well, if I, I just found a king size pink llama bedspread <gasps> that comes with pillow shams. <gasps> How and much is it? It's like a hundred. Oh, Jesus Christ. You can have it back. <laughs> Um, I Tell can't, me that's not cute. I can't. I, I can't afford food right now. Like I'm not paying a hundred dollars for a bed set. Set. Maybe I'll. I'll get you one for Christmas. Yule. That's right. Yule. Anyway, uh, but no, he 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 was 15 years old. He wet the bed, so they tortured him and killed him. Um, Does that make sense? Yeah. In the wake of that case, the British police started to receive special training on witchcraft related abuse which I would like to see what that training entailed because like I that's just not something that's prevalent in our community yeah like I would like to know exactly what that that training entailed because I, I can almost guarantee it was fucking wrong 
(laughs) Because anti-witch violence is rooted in the belief systems of traditional societies, it would be easy to slip into the the fatalistic view um, that this crisis is a tragic repetition of ancient aggressions. Uh, But where local superstitions explode into violence or migrate across a wide range of settings and societies, we can and must act. Um, Western branches of Pentecostal and charismatic Christian congregations must work closely with the more fervent ministries of their denominations. What's fervent? What? You just Did I say, say it wrong? That you just, I don't know what you, What is fervent? I, I don't know what it's that like, is. It's like when you're like, like feverish about it. Like you're... Oh, fervent? Whatever. Fuck you. <laughs> Their denominations among African and immigrant communities to foster an understanding of how exorcisms, they have it in quote, exorcisms, can spiral into deadly abuse. No African congregation wants to feel dictated to by the West, but there is a place for exchange and cultural pressure. You know who I would want to do an exorcism on me? Who? Like tie me up and everything. Keanu Reeves. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> when he was Constantine, uh, yeah, yeah, oh yeah, yeah. Anyway, he's so hot. I would like fake a possession <laughs> if he was the one that would come do the exorcism. Yeah, he'd show up and be like, "Why is your friend naked and tied up on the bed?" You'd be like, "She just wanted to be prepared." Yeah, <laughs> ignore the oil. <laughs> she just likes to moisturize. <laughs> You're like, <laughs> I'd be like, I'd be like, I'd be like, Keanu, I think the demon's in her vagina. Yeah. You must get it out with your penis. <laughs> Here's some, we, I bless this oil ahead yes, of time. Yes, this is anointing oil <laughs> to anoint her vagina. your Jesus rod. <laughs> Her sin yeah, cave. Her sin it? cave. <laughs> Ringing the devil's doorbell on yeah. her sin cave. <laughs> anyway. Be like, just touch her, her devil's doorbell and her sin cave will let you in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, I need to stop. Okay. Uh, so basically what they're saying is that like, you know, the, the, the larger ruling body of these religious, you know, groups they need to get their missionaries who are out in these communities under control and tell them what's appropriate and what's not appropriate. And my thing is like, listen, if, if the Pope can't get Catholic priests to stop raping boys, like, yeah, you know, um, but you know, but you know, the Catholic church, they have really kind of tightened down on exorcisms and there's like a whole process that you have to go through now to get an approved exorcism, you know, by the church. And they've actually started, you know, uh, punishing priests to perform exorcisms without the express permission of the church. So at least the Catholics have started to try (laughs) to get that under control. Um, Law should be enacted against accusing children of witchcraft uh, throughout the countries of Africa and the southwestern Pacific, as one Nigerian state has already done. All countries uh, like the Solomon Islands that still criminalize witchcraft should strike down those statute those stat- statutes. Uh, police indifference to crimes of witch hunting uh, must also be tackled, especially in societies where police officers themselves may share in traditional beliefs about black magic. In 2012, British government uh, a, a British government report on combating uh, faith-based violence against children provides a valuable guide to instructing the police on signs of abuse, asking religious leaders to condemn violence, and protecting vulnerable witnesses. I need you to leave me alone. I didn't say anything. It's the look. It's the look. <laughs> I have that look, though, and don't know it. You, this time, I looked over at you, and you had your head down, <laughs> and you were looking over the top of your glasses at me. <laughs> While rubbing your goddamn vapor pen across your bottom lip with one eyebrow cocked up. 
tell me you ain't got a look. It's my mom look. Jesus. Hey, but I showed you a picture of me when I was like two or three. Yeah, and you still had it. I had the look then. Yeah, yeah. It's my neck. <clears throat> so instead of resting bitch face, what is it? Like resting judgmental face? I guess. <laughs> and you know, and I've noticed that, you know, people say that Botox like makes your face not expressive. Yeah, guys, because I got some Botox. Yeah, it's it's fa- fantastic. Um, <laughs> but I find it just makes your more expressive. <laughs> Like, Without the lines. Yeah. <laughs> like, my eyebrow is more spockish. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, everything's smooth and... That's illogical. <laughs> and wrinkle-free and... Yeah. You look fantastic. Thank you. Mm-hmm. I feel fantastic. You do. I wish anyway. they had put it in my... Like, let me hold my boobs up. Didn't you ask him to do that? I did. I asked him if I could hold my boobs up where I wanted them and then have him put Botox in and they were like... No. It's not how that works. <laughs> but, you know, you can, uh, there, there is, uh, I think so, I'm trying to remember what they use. I think it's a cow tendon. That they, or it's, a, it's a tendon from an animal. It may not be a cow, but it's an animal. And they go in and they insert it. And it ends up, like, holding your tit up. What? Yeah. I'm not that, I'm not, like, even really... Yeah. Saggy. You're like, I don't need a cow tendon in my titty. Oh, guys, you know how I'm always making fun of her for grabbing her boobs? Like rubbing them and stuff? I actually read online that massaging your boobs all the time makes them bigger. So I sent her the article and said, now we know why your boobs are so big. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I will. I'll just be sitting there just rubbing my titties. Just rubbing my and titties. And she won't even know she's doing it. <laughs> like it uh, belting. You're yeah. sitting there just rubbing your tits. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, legal efforts must be paired <laughs> with increased social awareness. In a promising model, a 2010 Oxfam International report noted that some Catholic parishes in Papua New Guinea have been teaching uh, their parishioners about the natural causes of death and illnesses, um, you know, the ones that are kind of common triggers for, you know, when they think that there's like some witch paranoia or whatever going on. Um, providing shelter to accuse witches and denying the sacraments to those who accuse others of sorcery. Sor- 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 wow. Sorcery? Sorcery. Sorcery. At like, first I, I wasn't sure what you were trying to say. And you were looking at me and I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> I, was like, I was like, I don't know what's coming out of my mouth. <laughs> Help me. Anyway. Crucial too is that the United Nations and international human rights organizations start compiling yearly statistics on these crimes. We're severely hampered in understanding the scale of this crisis with our most recent global data. Um, it, I mean, it's already five years out of date. Yeah. And this was written back in 2014. Yeah. And it's kind of like what comes to my mind is when you think about rape statistics. Yeah. You know, how many rapes are not being reported? Lots. Lots and lots of rapes. So you think about like when you think globally trying to get, um, you know, statistics on people that are being killed off of witchcraft accusations. Some of these villages, they don't even see anybody from the outside world, but a couple times a year. Well, and it's like that thing. um, I don't want to say it too loud. I don't want my kid to hear. But like, I didn't even realize my first husband had sexually abused me until I talked to you about it. And you were like. Dude. Like, yeah, he, he abused you. You're like, that was sexual abuse. And I'm like, wait. Yeah. What? Yeah. So I'm sure there's a lot of instances where girls don't even yeah. realize something yeah. that's not okay is happening. Yeah. Because I mean, cause this article is kind of focusing a lot on like the, the really like serious ramifications like death, torture. But like, what about the instances where the guy's like, either you marry me. Or you marry my son, or I'm going to say you're a witch, and I'm going to kill you, so she does it. Yeah. You know? Um, so, I mean, like, it, it, I mean, it's just, it's huge. It has to be bigger than what the numbers are saying. It has yeah. to be. Yeah. Um, and, and I, you know, just taking any type of data uh, globally to compile statistics on this type of thing, because most of it is happening in these kind of third world, you know, areas where it's not like, you know, people can log on to the internet and take a quiz and collect <laughs> collect the data that way, you know? Yeah. Um, but most important, witchcraft-related violence should be branded as hate crimes by international courts 
and by all uh, jurisdictions where anti-hate uh, statutes exist. Mm-hmm. Um, it's vital to gaining wider recognition of this criminally, uh, of this criminally, and preventing it from happening in the future. So they're saying, like, you know, we need to kind of get on the same page globally. Mm-hmm. And have, you know, all of the, you know, established nations say that this is not okay. Yeah. Um, all of the religious bodies to get on board <clears> and say this is not okay. Um, and, and I'm just like, I'm thinking like, well, you can wish in one hand shit in the other. Yeah. You know, it's not going to happen. We haven't been able to get on the same page religiously ever. Yeah. I mean, ever. Um. There's some, you know, there's some religions that kind of tolerate each other better than what they used to, but like, there's no just wide understanding. So, I mean, it's not going to happen. Um, in too many places, the accusation of witchcraft has become um, an incitement to mob violence. Uh, it's time to lay the ghost of Salem to rest, the author says. So, um, that's kind of the end of the article, but, uh, I'm sure that stuff's been going on since way before Salem. Oh yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, it, it's kind of ridiculous. Um, you know, that we're still talking about this. This is still a problem. Um, I mean, I just, I don't think there is an answer for it. I don't, I don't think there's an easy answer for, for it at all. I think we're lucky <clears throat> that here in America, it's not as bad as it, you know, as, as in other places. But just like they talk about that one guy in New York, you know, I think I think mostly what we're seeing here in America is people that are using it as just a justification for their shitty crime. And like no one takes it seriously, you know, in, in America. But in these other countries, they do take it seriously. Yeah. And, you know, the whole village will turn the eye to a two year old being put out in the street. Well, you know, this goes back to people fearing what they don't understand. Mm hmm. And organized religion causes a lot of problems. It does. It really does. That it does. <laughs> Look at your face. That it does. I won't get into it. Yeah, that's a whole other podcast. That's a whole other podcast. Uh, but um, All I know is that I would be a much happier and free person if yeah. it wasn't for organized religion. Yeah. And when we say organized religion, we're not just talking about Christianity. No, because we have the same problem with 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 some Wiccans. Yeah, you know, even in even in the pagan community, because we'll label ourselves as pagan. Yeah, um, but I wouldn't say that you and I are religious no. so much as that we have a spiritual belief. It's yeah. not really a religious belief. Um, but even in the pagan community, man, like if you, if you don't hate Trump, I know I'm surprised you're, that you're, didn't you're not talk to me because I yeah. like Trump. <laughs> if you don't hate Trump, you're not a good. Uh, you know, pagan, if you don't, like, fall in line with every single little aspect within the LGBTQ community, yeah, you're not a good pagan. And I'm just, I'm just going to say, like, I support LGBTQ. Here's what I don't understand. Um, no one's confronted me about it. Yeah. Not that I would care if they did, but why would anyone think that just because I support the president that I'm anti-gay, uh, anti anybody of color. Yeah. And um and that I'm okay with people shooting up stores and schools. Yeah. That's not how it works. That's putting everybody under an umbrella. Well, and it's kind of like it, uh, what kind of reminds me of is is like it's it's using like by saying like oh, you know, Trump supporters this, Trump supporters that, like it's kind of like how they they say the devil made me do it. mm mm-hmm. Mhm. Like, Trump didn't make anybody do that shitty stuff. No. You know, um, and even if even if Trump did get on national television and say, I want someone to go do this, I, I want you to, like, there was that, what, how many fucking times did your mom say to you, <laughs> if so-and-so told you to jump off a bridge, would you do it? Yeah, you know? and there's actually um, whole groups of, like, African-American people that are Trump supporters. Mm-hmm. There are Latino mm-hmm. Trump supporters. Um, I actually know some homosexual people that mm-hmm. are Trump supporters. So people need to stop using that. Mm-hmm. I think that what they do is they try to scare people and intimidate them by saying, if you support this president, then you hate gay people. You hate anyone of color. You're racist and all this stuff. And that's actually not the case. Yeah. Now, I'm sure there are Trump supporters. Oh, yeah. That are racist. 
Well, there's an asshole in every group. Yeah. I mean. And I know some racist Democrats. Yeah. And so I, people really need to stop with this bullying because that's part of the problem. We can't have real conversations anymore about really important shit. So how how are we going to have a real conversation about the stuff that's going on in other countries to, you know, to... And, you know, most, like we talked about, like, with the Salem witch trials, most of these people that are being accused of witchcraft are probably not fucking witches. Yeah. They're probably innocent. Like, you know. Yeah. I mean, it's it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous that we've gotten to a point where we can't just have a conversation. Yeah. It's true. And you can't, like, look at someone and be like, knock it the fuck off. Yeah. <laughs> you know, without it becoming this big issue. People are just, they're aggressive, oversensitive assholes yeah. anymore. It's ridiculous. Yeah. So. I wonder if, I, I've often wondered if it's just like where we do have social media now and like, not only, because, you know, before, yeah, you could say and believe whatever you wanted to, but like now you have a platform and oh. you can kind of hear what other people are saying and believe in. So then you're like, well, no, I mine's right. So I'm going to put mine out there. People are really tough and brave when they're hiding behind their computer. Yeah. And, and, you know, it's not just people expressing their personal opinions anymore. Uh, it's people always immediately start name calling mm-hmm. and uh, insulting people's intelligence. Yeah, and you know, <coughs> there's nothing wrong. Uh, half half my family I'd say is Democrat, and the other half's Republican. Yeah, we all get along. What I've noticed is is it tends to a person's political affiliation tends to be affected by what they do for a living. Yeah, a lot of times. So, like everyone in my family that's a, a school teacher. I have a bunch of them in my family. They're all they all vote Democrat because the teachers get treated better under a democratic under a democratic president. Yeah. But all of my military family members are Republican because the the military doesn't get shit on like it does when there's a Democrat in office. So, yeah. you know, guys, it's okay to follow who you want to follow. Yeah. Vote how you want to vote, but don't bully other people into trying to into agreeing with you. That's not right. Yeah. That is very junior high. I like how this podcast turned into the (laughs) political PC. (laughs) People piss me off. How not to be an idiot. How not to be a jerk podcast. Like, I'm mad about it because this morning I was reading about that shooting. Yeah. I was like, oh no, there was another shooting. First fucking comment I see. Must have been a goddamn Trump supporter. I'm like, what? What? Yeah. I don't know. That stuff bothers me. Yeah, it bothers me too. It bothers me too, but anyway. All right, guys. Sorry, I'll get off my Let's soapbox. Say, hey, this this podcast. I mean, I think I think to be honest, I mean, yeah, people like listen to the witch stuff, but I think they enjoy us going back and forth just just as much, you know, and just the off topicness that we have. When I talk, it's either something really stupid or me being really pissed off about yeah. something, <laughs> or making fun of me. Yeah. <laughs> Like let's let's put a third option in there. Yeah. Yeah. Well, after we end this, uh, we'll order a pizza. <gasps> I'm going to urinate. Urinate, yes. And then we'll order a pizza. The offspring was texting me, wanting to blast her music for a few minutes. So okay. Yeah. We'll let her do that. Yeah. Okay. Life is good. Remember, you can find us on the internet at featherandbone.net. And is spelled out. It's not the symbol. Yeah. Feather. I did this last time, and because <laughs> I guess, I guess to me, when you when you slowly say a word that that says that you're supposed to feather a n d bone, bone dot net, uh, there you'll have access to our lessons, our shop. Um, there are links to the podcast, the Facebook group. Uh, if you want to buy some Avon, you can get some Avon. <laughs> Me up every time you say it. Oh, guys, by the way, anyone who's waiting on the next lesson, we apologize. It's not going to be coming anytime yeah. soon. I wouldn't expect it till, till sometime in the fall. Yeah. Uh, Raven Wind, she just has a whole lot on her plate right now, and she can't put as much effort into it as she would like to, and she only wants to put out good stuff. So, sorry for the wait, but it's coming. Yeah. It's coming. That's all I had to say. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah. <laughs> what was that? <laughs> I look up at her and she's got the, the lid of, she's got like a soda bottle and she's got the lid of it in her mouth like, whoa, <laughs> like, what are you doing? Anyway, remember, it's magic, magic motherfuckers. motherfuckers.